Greetings and welcome to The Contracting Guy. I am The Contracting Guy. And today I want to talk to you about need or influencing the need. Now, in episode 169, several episodes ago, I talked about requirements, building requirements. Today, I want to talk to you kind of in a tangent of that, not building requirements, but influencing the requirements. Now, you would think that, well, I can't influence the requirements. There's, you know, there's no way to be able to do that. Well, as a small business, you have the ability to influence the requirements. So how do you do that? By being available and visible. If you're available and visible, then the contracting people, more importantly, the end user can look, uh, look up your work, look up your stuff and be able to say, oh, look at they have it. If you're really good, if you're really, really good you would be able to find out what the end user wants and be able to tailor something to that or, or just as good as well, you know, let's look at goodness, is that find out uh, how to get a hold of the end user and be able to share, say, hey, this is what we offer here. Now, what this does is it influences the understanding of the end user on how the market responds. Now, the, think about this. If you only know about one car, that's all you're going to look at is one car. But if you look at a variety of different cars, you're going to start thinking and picking and choosing the best features of different cars and coming up with a list of things that are is important. Some things that aren't important. But some things are. And, and you can see right over here, there is a uh, little table I created to look at refrigerators. Now, where do you, you know, where do you fit in as a small business when looking at, let's say I'll use this table for uh, refrigerators, freezers, actually. So, well, okay, how do I fit into there? Let's say you're all, you have a product and you offer a variety of elements to it. And uh, this becomes the important aspect that you want to point out to the government person saying, you know, you're looking for a refrigerator or freezer. Here's some characteristics you should pay attention to. Now, this same holds true with any product or any service that you might have. I'm just using freezers as an element of discussion. But you identify those and then you point them out and you find your strengths. And you point those out and you express why they're important. People will respond to that by saying, okay, well, thank you for providing information. And then they will take it back and ponder it. And then perhaps that becomes part of the requirements as they go forward. Now, remember, requirements are generated based off of a need. They have a need. Sometimes that need can be influenced because they know the market can satisfy something that currently isn't being satisfied. That's where you can provide some great insight as to what that might be. You think about this, is that for those people who wear a beard, look like me and kind of old, is that at one point, uh, electric windows weren't standard. They're all rolled down. At one point, AM, FM radios were not standard, or cassette, or CDs. You know, those weren't standard. Those had to come in to be asked for. So people presented it, and that became, you know, the normative piece to this. So when you look at things, today's uh, outlier is tomorrow's norm. Today's outlier is tomorrow's norm. What you can present as a good idea today might be the commonplace tomorrow. So what you want to do as a small business is to present your best work so that they can you can influence them on what they want. Because frankly, think uh, well, I just can I just need the windows to go up and down. 
but I'd kind of like to push a button and they would go up or down rather than having to crank it. Those are the kind of influencing things that you can do is to influence how the market sees itself um, through the eyes of the government. Don't think the government does sufficient amount of market research to know what they want or know what they should want. They might just need, you know, they might just need uh, a pencil. And then you go, well, you know, we have a mechanical pencils. We've got colored pencils. We've got pencils with, you know, 0 0, uh, 0.7 lead or 0.5. How fine a point do you want? Do you want something that is, uh, that has an eraser at the end? Or do you want something that is a little bit thicker that you can measure, you know, things in a, uh, in a construction project? whatever it might be. So there's a variety of different things you can look at. What you want to do is present yours. Now, that becomes the driver of requirements building. Once the contracting people see that, that come from the end user, the end user will go, here's all the things I want. The contracting people will take that, sort of create a model, and then they'll talk to, hopefully, hopefully, they'll talk to the uh, uh, the end user and say, okay, here's the things I have. Is this correct? And the end user will go, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And then they'll build it. Uh, they'll build their solicitation off of that. Your influence comes way at the beginning by influencing what the require, my requirement might look like. And if you can influence how that requirement is built based on new uh, uh, an assessment of new opportunities that can be presented, Boom, you are in, you are in. Now, the two things, here's the two challenges that you're gonna face. One is doing it. And the second one is getting access to be able to do it. And that becomes the challenge that you have. And that's where working with partners like PTAX and others to be able to kind of create avenues of opportunity become important. This is where you also don't talk to the contracting officer, but you talk to end users, program managers, those people here that are going to create requirements. Remember, contracting people don't create, create requirements. It's the end users that do because they create the, the seeds of a requirement. And what Contract people do is just kind of create a form in which those requirements fit. That's where that's where these things happen. You know, it's like you're making uh, you're you're making sausage. Some of it's kind of nasty, but in the end, it's supposed to come out pretty good. And what I would want you to do is this: is influence decisions earlier by presenting solutions earlier. Decisions earlier based on solutions that you provide earlier. And if you do that, you're going to be better off and you most likely will be more successful by, by influencing uh, procurement requirements on an, at an early level. So with that being said, this is a contracting guy. I'm out. Contracting guy here. Thank you for watching the video and thank you for being part of the contracting guy family. If you would support the uh, the channel by like, subscribe, and share with others, that would be wonderful. This is the contracting guy. I'm out.